Hello, I'm Georgina Jalbo from Lexus PSL Private Client and I have with me today Natalie Martin, a Senior Manager in Private Client at PwC. And uh, Natalie is going to tell us about tax transparency and automatic information exchange and their impact on high net worth individuals and their families. Uh, so, Natalie, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Um, Oh, c can you just explain why is tax transparency and information exchange an important issue for private clients and their advisors? Well, tax transparency really is at the top of the agenda for revenue authorities around the world. Um, last year we saw the introduction of FATCA, UK FATCA, mm -hmm. and also the publication of the OECD's Common Reporting Standard, all of which um, allow for automatic exchange of information of financial data to revenue authorities. Now this really represents a huge shift for the way private clients are dealt with and I think for us as advisors, whilst there is a new context in which we have to work, what shouldn't change is our fundamental goal for our clients which is to provide workable tax compliance solutions. Yeah. And what are the effects of automatic information exchange that we need to be aware of? So revenue authorities are going to receive a huge amount of data some of this data they may have had before through clients' tax return filings. So there may be some duplication, but I think what there will be is a huge amount of cross-checking, an increase in perhaps formal or informal inquiries. And these can be time-consuming and they can be intrusive. So I think what's going to be key is for clients to be prepared for this. I think we'll probably see a, a particular interest from revenue authorities where we've got trust structures or other fiduciary arrangements and we really need to be sure that these are robust and can stand up to scrutiny. Um, also on some practical points, um, anyone who's dealt with FATCA will know that entity classification needs to be done um, before you can open a bank account. <laughs> yes. Um, <coughs> and will the various information exchanging agreements impact the type of structures considered by clients, do you think? So I think inevitably there will be some impact. Um, if we take trusts, for example, um, there's different reporting requirements if you've got a fixed interest trust as compared to a discretionary trust. Yes. Um, and that may impact what clients want to choose going forward. Um, if we think about protector provisions in trusts, if a protector is deemed to control that trust or have controlling powers of that trust, then all the assets of that trust may be reported. Again, quite a significant issue for clients to consider. And um, there have been various reports on registers of beneficial ownership of companies or trusts. Um, what, what's the latest on this? So the UK government has committed to having a, a register of beneficial ownership of companies. Um, they've yet to convince their Crown Dependencies and Offshore Territories to do the same, and there are some concerns there. And I think in the EU context, the EU is likely to legislate for this in the near future um, for companies. For trusts, um, I don't think we'll see a public register, but there will be some sort of requirement for trusts themselves to maintain details of the beneficial ownership. But I think what's key again here is that we are going to have automatic exchange of information. So the question really isn't around whether or not there will be information shared, it's just whether that will be public or not. Right. Uh, and what timescales ought we to be aware of in respect of automatic information exchange? So what's key again is that FATCA and UK FATCA are already in place. Um, the first reporting for FATCA will happen later this year and for UK FATCA that will happen um, by September 2016 for reporting periods this year and the year before. Um, the Common Reporting Standard is due to come in in 2016 and again with reporting a year later in 2017. Right. Um, so what should clients and their advisors be doing now? I think it's really important for clients and their advisors to be proactive in, in reviewing their offshore arrangements to make sure that they're robust and can stand up to scrutiny, um, to make sure that the financial institutions themselves have the correct data on them and to make sure that everything has been reported appropriately to revenue authorities. Now is really the time to stress test all arrangements. Um, and I think what else is important is to make sure that the audit trailer, the records are maintained properly so that if questions do arise later, once the information is exchanged, those questions can be dealt with quickly. Yes. 
Um, and so if, if issues or irregularities are identified when um, reviewing a, a, a client's affairs, what, what, what advice do you have? Well, again, yeah. I think it's really important to be proactive. If issues are identified, it's key for the client to go to the appropriate revenue authority and yeah. disclose that to them before reporting. Um, you know, around, around the world we have various different disclosure regimes and the UK has some very favourable disclosure facilities at the moment and the OECD has recommended that those countries which don't have them do implement something prior to information reporting. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you very much, Nasty. That was yeah, very, very interesting and I uh, hope it was for everyone watching as well. Thank you. Thank you.